G'day everyone, welcome back. That's all done. So, let's, uh, I don't know, let's focus on maybe doing some steps today. Uh, we're gonna take that off, weld a sort of frame up here, and maybe look at doing a second step, I don't know. Let's get that off, make a sort of frame out, and we'll see how it looks. One thing I do need to first updo, in the end of the last video, if you made it to the end of that. Now I do apologise, it was 45 minutes long, it's my longest bloody video ever. But uh, there was a lot of stuff to fit in, so <laughs> I, uh, I, I just I chucked it all in. And if you watch it to the end, thanks for watching, it was, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, so I said I was going to weld this up, and I completely forgot because I was talking to the camera. So I'm going to weld this part up here. Uh, if you didn't watch the last video, uh, go and watch it up here somewhere, wherever I put it. Uh, I mounted up the the bracket for the for the remote cannon, which is down there. And you know what? We might even just I'll weld this. We might even just chuck her on, bolt her in now, so it's all bolted. And uh, we might um, I'll show you it. You can see it moving. There we go, the cannon's all done. Works. Now, uh, probably need to give it the old, yeah, that's sturdy as. I was saying in the last video that I might need to 45 one of these. Put some supports under there. But, um, know, giving that a bit of a wobble around, I don't think that's gonna move that there. This is 16 and a half kilos, so that's why I was thinking along those lines. Um, so yeah, I've obviously still got to, what I'm going to do is uh, skin the outside. So a bit of 5mm plate that we've got here, it's going to go on the outside. I'm going to do some, because uh, the pipe is going to come down here and it'll be a, uh, a right angle and it'll go straight out. So what I'll need to do is just get a few of these on 45s and just make a, uh, a bit of a uh, case on, underneath and then seal that as well because uh, obviously that's where the pipe will get to, um, or get hit. And I'll also, uh, I haven't ordered any yet, but I'm gonna try and get a hold of some uh, fire resistant uh, wrap. So I'll put a, uh, a two inch hose the whole length along, but there, yeah, wrap it in, uh, in some fire resistant wrap. Cause obviously if you're uh, going to a fire and you've got hose that can melt, it's not really ideal. So <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. Uh, right, I'll, um, I mean the only issues with this is I've got to control it all the way over here because uh, the, the lead to the battery isn't long enough so I've, uh, I can't really see what, what's happening. Can, can you guys see? I can't. So anyway, if you miss the last one, it's controlled by this box. So you got up, you got down, you got left, you got right. And then you've got your spray button. So that's what's changing the nozzle. And you can just put that to whatever desired, uh, desired uh, stream you, you, you're looking for. So at the moment that's on long shots, so that's gonna shoot it as far as it possibly can. Uh, I've had a few questions. Where can I get one? Uh, this is from Alibaba. So just go on to Alibaba, type in uh, remote monitor and uh, these things will all pop up. There's a whole heap of them. Normally it's like you need to buy 10 of them uh, as a minimum, but you can buy singles as a trial. So you, yeah, that's where this is from. Uh, as you can tell, it's obviously got um, a whole bunch of Chinese writing on the top there. So it's a Chinese special, but hopefully it does the job for us. That's the, that's the plan. So that's uh, you know, a possible attack. With uh, up the back here, we'll have a soft hose with a little nozzle on there. So you can mop up as you're going along. 
There'll also be cannons up the top here so that you don't have to use that all the time. You can use, uh, you know, the, the cannons up here. A man on a cannon is gonna be more efficient than a man using a remote, in my opinion. And uh, like we will use that, but uh, you know, turning off or on and things like that, it's just gonna be a lot easier with a man if you're attacking a fast edge fire. If you're attacking a hot edge on a, uh, on a fire and you're needing knockdown, you'll be using the cannon up the front, you know, 20 meters out. You have a man up here with, the, uh, with a little mop up hose, mopping up what, uh, what red lights behind. And uh, yeah, that'll be our plan anyway. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll just see how it all goes, how it flows. Okay, um, I guess we try and make some steps. So we'll uh, get rid of our fire extinguisher holder there. We'll also get rid of our light up the top there and uh, we'll try and make up a bit of a platform here. Taking off the uh, fire extinguisher was easy enough. The light, not so much. So I'd turn all my lights on to try and test to see if it works. It doesn't work. Uh, and even if it did work, it is in the wrong spot. So as you climb up, you, you can whack yourself with this. So I just want to get rid of it completely. But the, uh, the army engineers decided that we're not going to have this as a threaded, you know, bolt on the, uh, sorry, nut, like stuck on the inside. You're going to have to take this whole panel off on the, uh, on here and get into it that way. So, oh, what did I just lose there? That was one of these little things here. So I was, I'm able to unscrew them, which is good, but I, I've got to try and move this seat forward uh, to try and get behind there. So lots of fun, lots of fun. Now I really don't like the, uh, the old army engineer. So let me show you. I've only taken it off to see if I could just get a hold of the nut, but uh, you guys probably can't see. It's dark. It's a hollow cavity that I'm gonna have to pull this whole plate off, well, this whole canvas thing off or down or see. Why? <laughs> uh, I'll see if I can just undo this and peel it forward. Obviously you don't wanna to go too much. You know, this is a 1980s truck and this upholstery has been here since then. You know, this roof is falling down, the aircon's falling down, and you just, yeah. I don't want to have it all rip or fall off and not get it back on, but let's, uh, yeah, I'll take this off, see so how we go. Now I really don't like the engineer bleep. So, see if I can get this up here. Uh, there's the hole I'm talking about. I thought that, that was one hole there was for the first nut and then the other hole was for the second nut. Well, I thought there was another hole. No, that hole is for the electrical cord to come in through and then the nuts are hidden back even further in there. So it leaves me with, I can't get, I, I'm not, yeah, I can't buddy get them. So what I'm going to do, put that all back together and then maybe I'll just get the angle grinder and just cut it flush because uh, I can't have that there, it's just too dangerous. It's, you will, someone will, in a rush, because a fire you're always rushing, um, is going to hit themselves climbing up and cut themselves badly. So I'll cut it, grind it flat and uh, leave it at that I suppose. Well, I just discovered something. <laughs> when I went to cut the uh, wire here, uh, you got a tiny little spark, so it was live. Uh, and I got the, uh, the voltmeter out, and yes, it is live, just that globe obviously doesn't work. So it's, it's 24 volt. Now I've turned the isolator off, but uh, if I turn the isolator back on, that one there works. So uh, that was a bit of a uh, interesting discovery. I reckon, uh, well, that one wasn't in the way anyway, so I'll leave that one. Uh, this one needs to come off 
Uh, I'm not sure what I'll do with the light out the back here now. I might, I still, well, if I can find wherever that switch, well, uh, that obviously goes directly to battery, comes into the cab. What I could do is dummy off that and uh, put a switch on that and put our, our flashing light through through that. And then that can just go up onto the top of the cab there and then this flashing light can screw in on top there. So that could be useful for that. I'll just need to pull all that stuff off again to then run a wire so I can put a, uh, a switch in. But that's all right, at least I've got that. That's a good option. The other thing I need to do is uh, run a two-way aerial out through the cab. So going out through that port there as well. Could also be a good option, but I'll, uh, I'll leave that wire how it is, uh, but I will continue to cut this bracket off because like I said, I just can't have that there because look at how tight it is when I'm coming up here like this. And uh, hopefully I've got a step here and you could just step up and just bang yourself straight into that. It's just a complete no-go, so it's going. It had to go regardless if the light was working or not. This is the longest and uh, I guess shortest piece of uh, 40 by 40 I've got without cutting. The other ones are only about, I don't know, there are a ton of the loft cuts, only about eight centimeters long, something like that. So this uh, does overhang by 24 centimeters. We'll see how it goes. Um, obviously I'd prefer to have a box come out, actually, just looking at that. Obviously I can box this across to here and then come up to that there just to, because you don't have much support coming off there. Um, so you'd sort of climb like that and then onto it like that. Should be all right, I reckon. Problem is sort of coming up on the, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I reckon that should be all right. Something like this. <laughs> all right, let's, let's see how we go. I'm gonna weld that up. We'll, uh, we're gonna use this existing one. We're gonna go uh, a strut down from here to here. Ah, oh, hang on. I wanted to make this so that it was uh, removable, remember? That's easy done. I can just bolt that one in there. We'll just drill a hole through that frame there. We'll bolt that and we'll weld it to there. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Just having a uh, quick think. I actually won't need to bolt it because uh, my plan is to have it like that and like that. So there really isn't any need for it to be bolted over here because it's gonna be lying on that surface there. Um, I guess I'll weld it up and then I'll see how much flexion there is when I'm standing. I'm 100 kilos. so. If when, I, when I'm standing on this edge here, if there's too much torsion, then I will bolt it. I've left room there to uh, run a drill through and get through this plate here. So there's plenty of room to, to drill and put a hole. We'll just see if we need to or not. I uh, obviously can't step on this because uh, it's only tacked together. It is clamped, so I probably uh, I don't want to because it'll uh, it'll break. But uh, just getting a bit of an idea. I think that should be fine. Uh, I just realised I haven't put a, uh, a cross beam along here. Honestly, I don't think I need one. So uh, what I'll do is I'll weld this up where it is as is. We'll then stand on it, see if we need a, uh, a bolt at that end there. But I'll, um, I'll also, once I've done this, uh, I ended up getting a hold of wheel there. Plasma cutter really isn't that 
yeah that crash hot so he reckons just use a uh, angle grinder so that's what I'm gonna do we'll cut this up uh, that is uh, I think it's the whole length so 2.5 by 90 uh, so this sheet is 2.5 by 120 so I'll cut 30 centimeters off and then I'll just have to because that thing is bigger than 30 centimeters I think we'll have a look uh, I don't have the tape measure on this side uh, so yeah it's definitely bigger than 30 centimeters so it might just be one panel there and then another sort of panel here and then I really can stand on it give it a test and if that doesn't work then we'll bolt it got to excuse all these little like light things on there that's uh I held the camera too close to the welder or the grinder at some point and the, the, the lens is all buggered I need to order a new one but you get those uh sunspots so anyway I'll weld this up Now that I've actually finished welding it, look at that, there's a lot less flexion in there now. When you do get that now, that could get very annoying with the engine running, uh, just having a constant vibration. We'll see, we can easily bolt that. So, just coming on up. Oh yeah, that is, that is much nicer to, uh, to come up. And then, let's get down on. Right, okay, let's uh, see how we go with uh, cutting some cutting some floor. We're obviously not gonna put the floor in today, that's gonna stay, we'll do that after it comes back from Wicked, but we'll, um, we'll cut it so I can put the step in, because uh, I wanna put the step in, so. And then that way it's sort of, it's ready anyway, so we'll, uh, let's do that. Got my line down, so uh, 83 centimetres. I've done it slightly bigger than what's up there. I said 90, now 90 was obviously outside to outside. Uh, but inside to inside, where it will be going is, it's about 82 on this side, about 80 half, 82 and a half on that side. So I've cut it at 83, oh, well, I will cut it at 83, and uh, then we can just grind it and just chip away what we need to fit it in. So I'll um I'll cut this because uh it'll fit perfectly now actually up in my steps. So uh there's 38 centimeters left over. So I'll cut that uh 41 by 38, chuck that up in my steps and that'll be alright. Then uh I could either use this stuff or uh I'll use the other plate there for my uh my guarding of this to you know go around here. Now, uh, now to cut, something I don't want to do. It's, uh, it's an absolute prick trying to cut. A nice straight line, that long, <laughs> with an angle grinder. Ideally, I'd like to use the, uh, the little four inch grinder, but um, it won't, it'll uh, cut through these discs in about a matter of seconds. So I've got to use the big nine inch, 
and uh, hopefully I can just get it nice and smooth the whole way along. So you saw that I switched to the to the little grinder. I thought I'd just give it a go. It's a lot uh, easier to hold than the big one, especially when it grips and it starts chattering, like I'm sure you saw. Uh, you do run through your discs really quickly, and you'll see I've done the line the whole way along. I did that because chalk uh, just does tend to fade away pretty quickly, especially if you're sitting there for a while with the grinder, the sparks coming around will erase your chalk line. So I did that with the little grinder, so I had that mark. Also for two reasons, because I might bust that out and just use the, uh, the oxy. We'll, uh, we'll fire up, we'll give her a go and uh, see if I can get a straight smooth line with the oxy. I, uh, yeah. I have mixed results with the oxy, so we'll see how we go. Right, that's done. Now, uh, before you comment, yes, I have training wheels on my uh, <laughs> on my oxy, and they just fell off. Uh, helps me with uh, getting the height right um, and not, you know, falling up and down as you're going along. Uh, secondly, yes, I know I'm horrible at oxy. Uh, again, I've never been taught how to use this, and it's just sort of been like a sort of. Yeah, you know, guess and go. Uh, I think the main problem is the nozzle. So I'm not sure if that won't sharpen there, but the uh, the nozzle. We've had this oxy well since before I started working on the farm full time, and I started working full time back in uh, uh, 2010. But you know, back even before then, when I started work at the end of 2007, um, we still had this oxy, and we've never changed this gun. We've changed the line because the line got a hole in it, but we've never changed the gun. So you know what? I think I might go and change the gun or the tip or something because uh, I know you can't see in there, but the uh, the tip has got all this crap just in there, which I think that doesn't... Uh, I'm not sure if you could see the flame coming out, but you don't get a nice flame, uh, concentrated uh, flame coming out, so it just goes everywhere. So that's what I'm blaming my bad oxying on. I'm going to blame my tools. All right, uh, it's lunchtime, so I'm going to go have lunch. When I come back, we'll uh, cut up what we need and we can uh, install it up there and weld that in place. Okay, we needed a bit of a break from all that uh, welding and cutting, grinding, you know, using our heads, all that sort of stuff. So I figured I'd uh, come out and have a look at the crop because, uh, you know, that's uh, what we should be doing and uh, just see how it's going. Just make sure there's no uh, disease in it, anything like that. Uh, I don't think there is, uh, but you know, it's always always good to get out and go and have a look. Um, so yeah, now I also did get the soil sampling, uh, sorry, the tissue test results back. I'll go through them in, a, um, in another video and uh, we can discuss them, but basically everything was fine. So nothing to worry about there. So. This is uh, obviously the wheat. Now she's uh, she's honestly a bit too thin for my liking. Uh, we had such a dry start that uh, it didn't tiller uh, as much as what we would hoped. So uh, the wheat is not going to perform very well for us this year. The uh, when we get to the barley, that's that's really nice. But the this this uh, this here isn't uh, going to be as good. I think down in Hattons it's uh, looking a lot better. But yeah, here is not ideal. Um, but the uh, things we can hope for is that the heads feel big. So you can see these little white things here. That's uh, the flower has, um, well, the 
the wheat has flowered, the seed has flowered. So uh, obviously we didn't want any cold nights when that was happening, otherwise it, we'd get frost. But the uh, the good thing is they're looking like big heads. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and they are one, two, three, four across. So it's nine high and then four seeds across. And we've actually had quite a lot of rain in the last two months. So we're up to over 100 mils now in uh, July, August. So these could turn into like what we call an ugly head. So they just can push out more seeds. So you can sometimes get five. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. If it does that and we get good weight in the seed, it uh, being a bit thin, you know, it'll compensate for it. So fingers crossed it does, but we'll, uh, We'll go over a look at everything else, but I'm loving the size of the heads. The heads are, they're very nice, very, very good size, which is, uh, which is a positive. And the crop's clean. There's no, uh, no disease out here. As I'm uh, walking towards the canola, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to walk through there all that well, if I'm gonna get wet or not. Probably gonna get wet. So, uh, the canola, like I said in the previous, uh, what video was it? Fence on spraying. Uh, we don't grow hybrids, so or so GM, so GM canola you can get up about this tall, even taller in some cases. Uh, we we don't do that, so we uh, we grow um, OPs, TTs, so they uh, they they don't get overly high. They will get a bit taller, and uh, sometimes you know we can get them sort of up to your your middle of the chest. But uh, this year, this is as high as it's gonna get. But look at that. What is lovely to see is just how many pods are on there and how big the pods are. That's just awesome how big those pods are. Nice big juicy pods. That there's a bit of black leg, uh, which Henry sprayed for uh, a while ago, which it's fantastic to see out here. We actually got not a huge amount of it, which is just fantastic. So I think we'll keep up doing that spray. But what is uh, absolutely amazing to see is just the pod size, the pod depth. How many pods out here? I'm excited for the canola. It, uh, yeah, it could be could be quite a uh, quite a nice year for canola. So the wheat is going to let us down, I think. But uh, canola and barley, fingers crossed, is going to be a, a good year. Okay, out into the barley. Now, if you've got a keen eye as you walk out here, you're going to be seeing uh, something that's a little higher than it should be, and that is this. Wheat, wheat, watermelon, wheat in the uh, in the barley. Now, I'm not sure where it's come from, but it's seeded in, so you can see that it's uh, it's in in the line where it's been seeded. So it was in our seed. Now our seed, I'm um, uh, you know, 95% sure we didn't have uh, wheat in our seed because we're pretty selective of where we get our our seed from so the only thing could be I was wrong on that or there has been a cross contamination at seed grading time and that's that's why we've got so much barley uh, sorry wheat out here but there is a huge amount out here like it's yeah it's not good um, yeah we're just lucky that we grow feed barley if this was uh, malt we'd be in trouble because you only allowed a certain amount of wheat in your uh, in your seed or in your sample but uh so we get out here anyway and uh it's got a few little bit of disease on the on the leaf not a huge amount uh obviously with it being a bit wet and um wet and cold around it's uh you know it's ideal breeding conditions for for disease um yeah, so uh, not really much we can do about it now. It's uh, the heads are all out, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's there, but it's not um, it's not massive. You know, it's not it's not little bit. It you know, I'd say it's actually very you know fairly clean for barley. Uh, I know one great thing is there's no weeds out here. There's bloody wheat, but there's no weeds, uh, and the seed the uh, let's count. Get a random head. One, two, three, four, five, six. That one's ten. That's not very good. Two, three, four. That one was ten as well. This one here. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, so there's a variation out here of, um, of seed size. We're, uh, we hope for more of the 15 sides, but I mean, I've grown big crops off just 12 a side as well. So nothing to worry about there. Hopefully it, uh, it just keeps on coming. So pretty happy with how it's all looking. Very happy with the rain. Uh, there's a few things that yeah, could be improved. But uh, yeah, we'll just have to take it on for next year. Okay, back to the shed. One step platform ready to go. So that's gonna go on there like that. Got a little bit of a uh, little bit of discrepancy there. I uh, obviously probably didn't weld it the squarest, considering that it was. Uh, sort of just thrown up there, <laughs> let's be honest. Uh, what I might do is I'll, uh, I'll get the grinder and just take this weld down a little bit and uh, I won't make much of a difference, but it'll make a little bit. Then what I'll do is I'll probably tack and then tack and then uh, stand up there and see if it bends down. And if not, I'll just probably hit it down just that's so all. Probably tack that back corner actually and then yeah do that just so it's all sitting down properly how it should and uh, we'll make it work okay that's all done. Hope I don't uh, melt my boots when I get up there and show you. Now, as I've stood back, I'm like, oh, no wonder this screws up. Uh, this here isn't quite square. I don't know if you can see it from back there, but exaggeration, but it's like that. Uh, and honestly, it doesn't matter. It'll be fine. So let's give this, uh, this bad boy a test, hey? Fantastic. Now, I didn't burn my boots there, but I wasn't standing on it for very long. That is uh, pretty good, I reckon. I um, would love to test out here and see what I'm going to need out. Yeah, I reckon I am going to need to do the supports out here. It's just, just doing that now. There's probably just a little bit too much flexion. So, bit of mud. So yeah, I reckon uh, we'll do that. The next video we'll be focusing on doing our, uh, our struts down to here and uh, we'll have to make a cross member and down to there and bolt, we'll, but we will bolt them on down there and we'll focus on, we'll come around to the other side. We'll focus on what we're gonna do around here too. So around here we'll uh, work on enclosing this up and uh, protecting the side, the bottom, and the front. And then I've got to work out what I'm going to do with my radiator. Because uh, unless I just do a, a tube up inside there, I don't know. We'll figure it out. So, tune in to the next one, guys. Uh, I reckon we'll leave the video there. We've got the step done. We went for a crop tour. We've got that mounted up. So, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll leave it there. And uh, I'm then going to go home and get uh, bags packed because I'm off early tomorrow morning to head to Melbourne to go for my Vembers ambassador community thingy, which I'll tell you all about when I get back. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And as always, see you in the next one.